Jeffrey Marsh, the TikToker who is an LGBTQ plus activist, um, has gone into some hot water because of the way in which they promote their content or who they address their content to. It's not necessarily a problem that they have um, liberal beliefs or that they believe in equality or that they promote the idea of LGBTQ plus education. I think a lot of people can be down with that. I have absolutely no problem with that. The problem is, is that when they introduce their videos, they often say, hey kids. Right. Let me get my view on LGBTQ plus education and children uh, straight. (laughs) Funny. I don't have a problem with it. I think that while kids are having um, adult education, they should also include LGBTQ plus education with that. I think they should be taught at the same time. I don't think that adult education should be brought in at an early age for LGBTQ plus because I don't think that it's particularly relevant. Um, I do think it is quite naive to believe that younger children don't have questions about their identity um, and about themselves, but at the same time, it's okay to have questions. Just because a child is curious doesn't mean that you have to sit them down and tell them absolutely everything about the LGBTQ plus community right then and there. It's okay to have breathing time. It's okay to allow a child to breathe. Uh, Maybe a boy at the age of five starts liking dresses. Just because they like dresses doesn't mean that you have to sit that boy down and start talking to them about gender roles. Just let them like the dress. It's absolutely fine. They can have the dresses and they can play with Barbies if they want. It doesn't mean that that child is going to be LGBTQ+. It doesn't mean that they are trans. It doesn't mean that they're gay. Some boys like dressing up in princess dresses when they're little. Some of those boys, yeah, they might actually be trans. They might be girls. Some of those boys might turn out to be gay, but some of those boys will turn out to be the straightest men you ever did see. And that's fine. Straight cis men, by the way, (laughs) just to clarify. That's cool, that's fine. There's no problem with it. I don't understand why the need to bring in education for preschoolers is a thing that's being talked about and while I do think the internet does hype it up, I don't think it's a massive issue in of itself. I don't think governments are sitting down and going, ah yes, teach them about the gays as soon as they enter the education system. I don't think that's a thing that's happening. I do believe that there is a lacking when it does come to LGBTQ plus education. For example, we were always taught in school, well, it wasn't uh, an abstinence-only education. We were always taught, you know, the only 100% way that you won't get pregnant or get an STD is to abstain. Uh, And we said, if you have gay, you won't get pregnant. We brought that up to the teacher and she was like, oh, well, yes, that too. I think that's the only thing that was really touched upon. So I I do think it is important that we do talk about LGBTQ plus um, adult education when it comes to talking about adult education as a whole. My view on having LGBTQ plus education within schools is that I think we should bring about that type of education when we're already talking about heterosexual versions of it. For example, I think uh, uh, we started learning about periods and that for girls when we're about 10 years old. So we learn about periods and then progressing on from that when we're maybe 11 or 12, we start getting into education, which is normal, you know, because kids are developing at that age. Um, I think when we start talking about those things, we can also incorporate LGBTQ education in that as well. There's no problem for that. But for some reason, people are are talking about wanting to have LGBTQ education for people, for children who were younger than 10. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's wrong to let kids know that gay people exist. Uh, That's not what I'm saying. I think it's fairly obvious. I think most children can grasp that. Um, 
kids aren't stupid they can see the media they can probably see like gay icons um you know maybe kids who were born around maybe my era who watched the lion king they might have seen elton john's version of it and elton john is evidently a gay person they have been exposed to him whether or not they registered that he was gay later on down the line they'll be like oh i know elton john and then you find out he's gay and it's it, they weren't scarred by it it's fine of course we can talk about some things that i do think would be very important to teach to kids um but i don't think it needs to be in a way that is like a set curriculum for example um i work with kids so these kids were aged five and one of the the little boy went up to a little girl and held her hand and she snatched her hand away and i was like look look little boy's name if you want to hold her hand you have to ask her first it's consent and she was like well what's that and i was like well if he wants to hold your hand he has to ask you and it's the same if he wants to give you a hug he has to ask you first and she was like oh and then she walked away and she had she understood she wasn't scarred i wasn't going to go into anything else to do with consent because it's not relevant for a five-year-old but that is a form of consent whether it's sexual or not it's important it's still her being touched whether that's her hand being held or if she's being hugged so i i let her know and she was fine with it I feel like everyday lessons like that are reasonable and are sufficient enough for the time being. Just because, and in the same regard, let's say for example a little boy puts on a dress. I think, maybe a five year old, puts on a dress and puts on some of his mum's high heels. I think it's acceptable just to let him do that without having to suddenly start thinking about educating him about gender roles and sexuality. Just let him wear the dress if there are any other signs maybe of transgenderism that um that you might see that's a different thing if it's a persistent need to do it because there is a difference there's a need um and somewhat of a what could be described as an obsession when we're talking about children who are transgender so that is a completely different ballpark but if it's just a boy who occasionally likes putting on a dress you don't have to sit him down and then say look son we're going to have to talk about gender roles and sexuality today. No, just let him wear the dress. He'll be fine. He isn't and like if he isn't going to suddenly be a bigot overnight because you didn't tell him that it was okay and he's going to hate wearing dresses from now on. The same way that you don't have to have first intervention with anything. Our kids and they are impressionable, but they're not stupid. Kids are learning beings they are inherently learning beings it's what human being children do they learn so they aren't stupid they aren't going to suddenly become bigots if you don't teach them about equality asap there are ways that you can do it in a non academic way that's absolutely fine in a nutshell i think yes it's absolutely fine if we're talking about heterosexual education sure talk about things that relate to lgbtq2 that's fine we can talk about the biology of it and the fact that some people just happen to be gay there's nothing political in that um lgbtq people are often politicized because of the left supporting them more often than the right but being gay isn't inherently a political statement they make their videos introducing it saying hello kids I'm sorry, what did you just call me? <laughs> I talk to the kids. Your parents made mistakes. You can't blame the parents. Of course they can. They're just concerned about the children. They're If you do not have a family that loves you, I'm going to be your family. Mercy, I really do love you. I'm not playing a character here. I see the real you. I know. Some people have argued that it's a therapy technique where somebody um, talks to an adult as if they're a child to help them resolve unsolved trauma or like come to terms with unmet childhood needs. Um, from what I know, Jeffrey Marsh isn't a therapist. It might be a therapy technique. They ain't a therapist. So it, it's irrelevant, <laughs> like, first of all, 
So let's say it's true and that Jeffrey is using this, t- this technique as a therapy technique um, and is not in fact talking to children directly. Not a therapist, fairly pointless. It doesn't make me feel any better. I find it a bit bizarre. But I don't think that's the truth because Jeffrey also talks about topics in regards to LGBT kids, talking about what to do if your family doesn't accept you. And that's fine. That's like needed. We can't ignore that there will be, even in first world countries with freedom of speech and human rights, that there are intensely homophobic parents or transphobic parents. We can't ignore that. There will be unfortunately parents who will go to the extremes when they find out that their child is LGBTQ. Maybe the justice system might not punish them, but doesn't mean the social circle won't. But the problem herein is they're directing things and they're telling their audience that they love them and that that they are directly talking to that person. I think there's a quote in one of the TikToks where they say, a lot of people have said, it feels like when I watch your TikToks, I'm talking to you and not just a camera, but I really am talking to you. And I hate to say, this is called pandering. People do it so that they can buy their audience's affection. It's like when a YouTuber says, I love you guys, right no you don't like i you don't know me you've never met me you have no idea what my name is you don't know what my favorite color is you don't know what my zodiac sign is you don't love me in the same way that when jeffrey says i love you to their audience they mean i love the support that you guys give me and it's fine to appreciate support and appreciate things from people but i think it is pandering and i think it's quite frankly just disingenuous when you claim to love every single person in your audience because you don't know them and and based on popularity statistically quite a few of them are going to be hate watchers who hate you who are transphobic and homophobic. Do you love them? Do you support them? I don't think you do. I don't think you would. One mother was concerned because of the way that Jeffrey refers to their audience, saying, hey kids, and oh, if your family don't accept you, then I accept you, and it's in a very weird way. You can always talk to me. And I feel that level of familiar, familiarity, 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 familiar, that's the word, familiarity, familiarity, that is not a real word anymore. I feel like that level of being familiar with somebody is a bit strange. I'm not going to imply that Jeffrey is using his audience, which are young for nefarious purposes. I'm not going to make claims that because somebody is creating content towards children or um, orbiting issues that affect children, um, I'm not going to imply that they are doing anything inherently wrong. Uh, And I think you can get what I'm trying to say when I say that. I don't think it makes them a nonce, basically. There isn't any proof to say that Jeffrey is conversing with any underage people in an inappropriate manner. So I'm not going to say that. But it is concerning that somebody who is online, who is talking directly to children, is directly encouraging those children to trust in a stranger on the internet rather than their parents. And in some cases that might be valid if that per- if that child is in an extremely homophobic household and, you know, their parents say that being gay is wrong so they hate themselves, and it might be better to trust in somebody who says, no, you are worth it, you are not, uh, you are not a sinner, you are not somebody who's doing something wrong, you are fine the way you are. So, I can understand it from that level. So, but I can, but I can also understand if a pet, a, a being a parent, and well, not being a parent, because I'm not one. But I can understand if a parent 
took issue with that if a parent saw that and felt threatened by it and this woman who is a who is a who is a Muslim, which is relevant to the story, has two children, two daughters, I believe. I won't go into any information regarding them, for obvious reasons. And she went on TikTok and she started talking about her concerns in regards to Jeffrey Marsh um, and the language that he was using um, towards children, as if to try and get them to trust him instead of their parents. Um, which is concerning for a lot of people because while, you know, LGBT hatred does exist within families and might be a problem, sometimes um, the issue might not be with the LGBTQ community or being queer as a whole. Um, The concern from the parents might be that the child is being misled. Um, And that's reasonable. In response, Jeffrey Marsh's fans found this woman's information uh, include they found um, presumably where she lived because she received an email where somebody had documented her moves throughout the day. They would say what time she would pick up her children from school, what time she'd drop them off at school. Her car was vandalized. They had her children's school information. It's wild. Like, and the thing is, I've I've seen. Jeffrey's response and all he's like is thank you for being an ally and thank you for you know supporting me I'm sorry but the way that they're supporting you and sticking up for you is by doxing a woman and her two vulnerable children Um, and obviously a lot of the hate that she has received is is about her being a Muslim which is why I mentioned her being a Muslim It's it's just backwards to me that you that these people who say that they uh, are um, accepting and they don't believe in Islamophobia or sexism or anything of that kind and they want to protect children at the same time adopting this woman for speaking out and saying that she found some of the content questionable. She has since deleted everything and says she won't cover it anymore out of fear of what would happen or what could happen to her children. Uh, So I can't confirm what exactly she said. Um, But from what I've heard, a lot of people who looked at it from the outside in were like, she was quite reasonable. She didn't use any slurs. Uh, She wasn't derogatory in any way. And all I have to say really at the end of this is it is a darn shame that the only way that people can support Jeffrey is to intimidate another another person into silence, uh, in this case, this woman.